We are back. Indeed we are. So uh, this will be game two of uh, the best of three. I'll remind people that Concordia University won game one. And uh, we'll try to be more awake for you guys. Do you think they'll change their bands this time around? Um, I believe that... Uh, I don't see why Concordia should change their bands. They might add a band since they only banned two in the previous game. Um, I think we may see some different bands from uh, George Washington University. And as I said that, we see the Morgana band and we see the Vigar band. That Vigar did a lot of damage previous game. Interesting that they see the Morgana as a problem, but that's probably because they want to go with the same kind of pick comp. That is absolutely possible. There's the Lee Sin band as well. Lee Sin absolutely went off in the game one. Definitely. That was a really, really good showing from Wanderer, but uh, we'll see if he has any other nice tools he can uh, pull up his sleeve. And at least banned by George Washington University. That is an interesting that they banned it, um, considering that is uh, their jungler's main uh, champion. Hmm. I'm guessing they wanted to try and uh, outsmart Concordia, maybe? I don't know. We'll see. Anyways, the last band was Rek'Sai. And uh, we're going to see what uh, picks there are. I highly doubt we're going to see a Heimerdinger. Um, I don't know. Maybe we'll see it. So, um, yeah. Not much to say at the moment. <laughs> no, they're just uh, uh, covering this ominous pick here. Uh oh. Oh no, not the demon. Anything but the demon, guys. But okay, because it'd be okay. ten Kench again. Yeah, like just like last game, there is a bunch of picks that we can be surprised by here, or just a bunch of power. Yeah, picks. and it is going to be Tom Kench. Um, we don't know if it's top or support. Or even jungle. Um, we'll have to wait till later, probably. Uh, just remember that uh, Slod actually played a top lane uh, in game one. So, uh, yeah, looks like it's a very important pick for uh, George Washington University. Could be that they um, are trying to deny it. Maybe, are you, do you know, maybe if Concordia's support plays a lot? Uh, I don't think so. I think Silent Reaper is mostly, uh, mostly plays, um, mage supports from, uh, what I recall. Mm, At least that's what he played last year. Interesting, uh, focus on TK. Maybe they really, really think he's important. And Concordia University hovering over, uh, Gragas and Lulu. Looks like a very similar team comp might be in the works as, uh, game one. But no, the Jinx is actually locked in. And the Lulu is definitely locked in. So, uh, interesting. Is it going to be another uh, hyper carry comp? Or um, are we going to see something different? Misfortune? Please? It's very hard to talk about picks until you see them locked in. <laughs> I know. <laughs> so you almost feel as if the players know that we're trying to say stuff. and um, But I'd you can't help feel excited that they are going to just surprise you. I don't know. I'd love to see other picks. Tarek for 2015. Yes, you heard it here first. <laughs> well, maybe 2016, okay. after his rework. If you pick Tarek on a stream where people want to be entertained, I will shame you. Oh, <laughs> you can boy. shame me anytime you want. <laughs> no, don't. <laughs> Brahma, on the other hand, a lot more exciting. Uh, ooh, okay, ooh. Ash... Ash locked in, and they're going to let the timer run out, and that is going to be a Braum. So Ash Braum bot lane, that is a lot of slow. Yeah, pretty strong bot lane. Pretty strong team fighting team at the moment. Uh, they're lacking maybe a little bit of damage, but otherwise it looks really strong on blue side actually. Let's see what purple team is going to form out right now. I, they don't really have much of a comp at the moment. I guess they do have a Jinx focused comp if they decide to go that way. Yeah. Yep. Oh, now the Gragas shows up. 
yeah, that's that's actually very good for Jinx as well. It's it's great to separate the team so that picks one after another can be you know possible or more possible. And Janna is an excellent, excellent uh, pick. They have a ton of disengage. Yeah, and that's going to be critical when uh, you have Brom ulti and uh, Ash Arrow ult uh, appearing towards you. Yeah, the only problem is this is a this is a team that's really good when they get their you know kind of perfect context or the perfect placement of um, Gragas ulting and, and separating the team and allowing to make one pick in particular. They're not super good when uh, being aggressed on unless they get you know the the outplays with their um, Lulu ulti, for example. Yep. But, Meanwhile, um, Kim Ban is uh, hovering over Vi. And he locks it in. So we are definitely seeing a heavy engage uh, team comp from uh, George Washington University. That's going to help the damage too. She has a little bit of burst that's going to be helpful on the Jinx. Uh, but this is kind of the same thing we're seeing from... Um, yeah, this is very similar from game one for uh, Concordia University. Um, the Lu is still there and the whole team is made to protect Jinx. Whereas Gene Parmas now picks his... Uh, Twisted Fate. So, uh, a pick comp and an engage comp uh, at the same time for uh, George Washington University. We'll see what Engineer Diab has uh, to pick, or if he's going to pick a top lane, or uh, yeah, because that Lulu is still a flex pick at this point. Purple team is really dependent on those Lulu, or, or rather on those Jinx passive resets. That's, that's what they need to get going in any team fight. I think this game is going to be Sweeney. Just like the last game, I think it'll be very Sweeney. And it's going to be one team or the other. But yeah, I think both of them have a pretty good comp edged out right now. But well, 10 seconds left for the picks. So hopefully he picks something. Yeah. Blue <laughs> team needs to be very good with their engage because if they get dragged... Oh, into the Malzahar pick. Ooh. Interesting. That is an Engineer Diab special. I told you guys. They don't just hover it for fun sometimes. You know? They pick it. Uh, with teleport. We have As, uh, two teleports on both sides. Two teleports on both sides. Indeed. That is going to make for some fun 5v5 bot lane at one point or another. So, um... Yeah, so we have a very uh, engaged pick comp uh, for um, George Washington University with um, disengaged lockdown comp uh, for um, Concordia University. It's going to be very interesting to see uh, which team is going to uh, punish the other one, especially in the early game. And uh, yeah, as uh, they're about to load into the rift, uh, we are going to uh, take another uh, three minute break by, and then we'll be back uh, once they're loaded in.
We are loading into game two of George Washington University versus Concordia University. I am Dimitri, now uh, joining the casting sort of desk, right? Or kind of online desk, the virtual desk. So uh, that was an interesting game one. Game two comps seem a little more interesting this time around. We have a Malzahar. That's, uh, that's new. What do you think about the Malzahar? I think it's going to be very interesting, actually, because um, he can really lock down someone. Um, yeah, it's going to be uh, a fun game full of space aids. <laughs> the real test of this game is level 6. Level 6 is probably going to be the most interesting. With the comp George Washington has drafted, you'll probably see a lot of all-ins bot lane level 6, like TPTF alongside Tom Kench TP, plus Tom Kench alt, plus Vi alt, plus Braum alt, plus Ash alt. It's pretty deadly. Oh, definitely. It's going to be a bloodbath in bot lane, especially <laughs> after level 6. Most likely. Like, as soon as TF gets his um, ultimate, we're going to be seeing uh, a whole bunch of uh, teleporting in bot lane. And this is pretty interesting. George Washington going to go for a ward on red side. Kind of strange. You usually do that ward when you're expecting a lane swap or the jungler to start red side and invade your blue. So it's probably what they're doing. It just. Seems a bit strange that they place one outside the red buff and one behind it. Not really going to get much information on that until top lane really evens out. So yeah, it's a pretty standard start for Concordia. They look to go even early on, not get traded on too heavily from the Ash and TF. <laughs> he ate Vi there, which was interesting. Not sure if that was what he intended. He ate Vi? Yeah. yeah instead, of, instead of the buff? <laughs> well, like, yeah. Instead of... Uh, some the, some part of me wish like, Tom Kent just gets red buff, just so he could walk around and like mess things up. <laughs> but we're going to see a trade. The Ooh, Silent Reaper getting pretty low already. Not really going to get much out of that, but good trade, just a chunk Ash early on, so this is probably going to push Jinx's advantage. She's going to try and look to chunk him out with the AoE Rockets, plus Janna Shield. But I think the most interesting matchup in this game is the mid lane. I haven't seen a Malzahar in, like, collegiate play in a super while. A uh, really long while, so... And Mal the thing with Malzahar against TF is that you could silence him out of his ultimate, and you could si you could root him with your 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 weird silency alt that you can't cleanse. <laughs> so it's gonna be pretty interesting when we see that top lane is probably gonna be exactly like it was last game, with the 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 farming and just Tom Kent trying to go aggro and nothing really coming out of it. But uh, looks like Tom. Tom Kench TP top lane, and it's probably going to be pretty boring <laughs> for the start of the game. It feels like we're watching one of those games where nothing much happens. And, ooh, double flash in the mid lane. And for, here comes ooh, Vi, uh, trying to get yeah. the re-engage. Getting the proc onto Wanderer, but nothing's going to come of that. Couple flashes burn from Gragas and Tia. Yeah. Yep. Uh, solid, solid gank from Vi, burning the, uh, getting Gragas super low, so it might be a bit hard for him to clear. He's gonna probably recall after this camp, but uh, yeah, the Malzahar is space, space disease. I'm not you're gonna use the other term. It's what space aids? Space aids? <laughs> is that it's what the teenagers call it nowadays? Guys, it's clearly snow. Snow. Oh yeah, the Malzahar is snow. We're casting from Montreal, so we had like this weird weather where it's just like ice pellets hitting your face. I had to walk down the hill to get to here, and like there were just these ice pellets hitting me in the face constantly. It was brutal. You know what's really good about that? Just staying inside. And that's what I do. But I, I had to go somewhere to cast. I have birds, man. Birds are loud. You can't cast with birds in your house, it's impossible. I have like two parrots, and I'm sitting at home, and they're like, hello, hello, hi, hello. So let's uh, focus back on the game at hand now. <laughs> <laughs> but really, not, not much is going to happen until level 6. But right now, what's important is Malzahar needs to chunk out TF to avoid that level 6 TP. 
So he's going to really shove that mid lane in because not only is Vi closing in on level 5 right now, TF is pretty out of mana because he's trying to keep the wave shoved into around midpoint or else he's going to lose a lot of CS. We're going to see a small trade in VOD. Braum going to get the stun onto Jinx. Tornadoed up. Heavy trade. Exhausted. Exhaust comes out right as he gets trapped. Ooh, Fetch almost got trapped but was able to move past it. It's... Looks like Jinx is going to be okay though. Gragas is there just in case. Gragas is there but doesn't look like he's going to do much to avoid He doesn't have flash so he can't really flash gank the bot lane. So it looks mostly like he's going to go try and pressure mid lane or at least mess up Vi's day in the jungle. But T TF is getting really bullied in this matchup. Both mid laners are actually out of mana to an extent. But surely Malzahar level 6 is pretty dangerous that being that low. Hanging up in the bottom lane there is going to look for a gank. Gets, oh, the flash out of fetch, but does not get a knock up. Malzahar good so going in. First blood coming out for Concordia. The Malzahar. And here we go with Vi. Vi's still level 4. Oh, Can she no get it? Slow. Oh, can she get it? Way. Lulu's coming down. Lulu, flash alt! Flash alt, Lulu! Oh, nice hey. But nothing's so, gonna come out of that further. Good trade, I think. Malzahar gets a kill. Lulu loses her flash. So kind of, kind of alright from both sides. Definitely the first blood on Malzahar is gonna help a bunch in this matchup. And TF is going to go for the Sheen, which I don't really agree with against Malzahar. Because Malzahar now, especially with that kill, is going to shove you ultra hard and the Leandri's Torment. Which is, uh, not the Leandri, the Haunting Guys, I think it's called. Which is, now your Space Aids will catch you on fire, eventually. So, now they've become crabs. <laughs> this is getting weird. <laughs> Malzahar is... Ultra weird, but Cordia's bot lane is pretty low. They have to be careful here. Vi and TF are around. TF does have his ultimate, so it looks like uh, they're going back. Yeah, TF probably looked for the engage. He got in within range, but the thing is, if he dies a turret, there's no real follow up CC right now. Ash is not yet six. She's probably gonna hit six in the next wave. And there's still threat of the Lulu TP. Lulu still hasn't used her TP, neither has Malzahar. So, probably wiser not to go for that, with, especially with the wave not being in the right place. But now that Vi is going to hit level 6, we're probably going to see a dive on the bot lane. And Tom's coming mid right now on Malzahar. So, Malzahar, if you remember, does not have a flash, so this could be pretty bad. And here comes a Tom Kench and the Vi mid lane. And, uh, <laughs> well, and also hard just tipped on, like tiptoes out of there basically. He's a baller. He just he just walks the other way. He's like, I'm not having any of this. Drops the space eights pool yeah. and just pieces out of there. That was definitely a failed flank or uh, encirclement attempt. Was uh... does doesn't lose too much. Tom Kench top lane with that alt is not really doesn't really hamper uh, his. Uh, Laning yeah. phase, he still has his teleport up in case bot lane goes in, but uh, it does waste quite a bit of time though. It, it does. He lost a he lost a wave and a half to Inganks right now, so Inganks actually ahead of him in CS. Only six, not too bad. And we're gonna see the blue buff go over to Malzahar. So now Space Days will be on a lower cooldown, and that's gonna be pretty bad for TF. TF has to go for the wave. Look how fast the Malzahar is pushing in the TF. This is why I don't agree with the Sheen. I really feel like he needs the mana regen to push out that wave further. But uh, probably going to look for the split push, especially with the triple TPs technically later on in the game. Mm. So yeah, pretty even so far. <laughs> Only a 500, uh, around 700 gold lead for Concordia, which is definitely that first blood. Plus a bit of the farming advantage in the bot lane and mid lane. But the game will be really determined around probably first dragon in about two and a half minutes. You can see blue side, the blue team is stacking out towards the bot lane. Looks like T TF looking for the TP and doesn't decide to pull the trigger on Destiny again. Kind of questionable. But no. They're out the, yeah, they're taking out the ward and the try in the bottom. Yeah, you can tell this looks suspicious. 
you could tell this looks suspicious from uh, George Washington. They just cleared out a ward and they're shoving really hard. So when Vi is walking up through the lane bush, has to make sure she doesn't get spotted by these creeps. We do have an ulti coming out right there with the And ulti. there's a TF and the cleanse coming out. But there's a nice flash. And Vi's going to go in. For Vi. The ultimate. Oh, the rocket whiffs, but double lift is going to get saved by Inganks. That was, that was super close. Nothing's going to come of this dive. Wow. That was... That was that was special. That was a really sick uh, the teleport at the beginning of that fight from Double Lift was excellent to dodge basically everything. He did get stunned, but he has that cleanse, so it didn't even matter at that point. Malzahar is now is going to get free damage on that mid turret. That's a pretty pretty nice dive with a pretty sick counter to that dive with the Lulu ultimate coming in right at the the perfect timing to cancel that auto attack out. That was uh. That was really cool. It should be in our highlight reel. We should make highlight reels for these. That was uh, the lackluster plays. <laughs> but yeah, TF now at a severe disadvantage. Well, not as much in CS because this is definitely hard to last hit with the Malzahar vo Voidling. 1000 DPI. 1000 DPI. So the, the. I just pressed the button on the computer mouse and it said 1000 DPI to me, so. Everyone on stream, the mouse is at a, a thousand DPI. Just in case you were wondering. Everyone was. Dragon being pinged out by blue team. They see that Janna was clearing a ward there. Probably getting a little bit nervous on the side of uh, George Washington since uh, the last game was fairly one sided, and right now it's looking pretty good for Concordia. We do have a little bit of a scuffle up top lane. Oh, okay. the flash! The ulti! The, the space aids! Spaces are gonna get him. Braum gonna come in, get the stun onto Janna. Right now, Gragas yeah, is tanking the turret, so which is. And Wanderer, too. He just submits <laughs> himself. To death. himself to also, super low. Probably gonna get eaten. Yup. That is Lulu Gumbo. That is, uh. Lulu's not a very. I guess Lulu tastes purple. Is that. That, that was a really good trade for George Washington. Not only did they get three kills, they got a lot of pressure mid lane now and top lane. Teleports bottom. That's a really smart move. There's basically no threat top lane and bottom is getting pushed Vi's out. Vi's gonna go in onto Malzahar. We'll get the QTF. Yeah. Getting caught out and he is gonna go. He's gonna down. drop. Braum comes in just for the reassurance. And now George Washington has actually jumped up 500 golds. Ooh, that in the shield just in time. Yeah, I, right as I was saying, it's not looking good for George Washington. They turn around and they get a few fights and across the map and yeah pop that gold lead i was really concordia going very aggressive without any wards on the blue side jungle because if they had more wards there or just relatively at the top of river bush they would have actually seen vi coming in and yeah. potentially nullify that so you we're have gonna have a tp have bot lane. lane to help double it but it's too late engineer diab just put himself in a really dangerous position there's another TP out coming from George Washington. Wanderer puts out the barrel because it's time to run. And the, the tornado actually going through the river. <laughs> With Concordia's team comp though, they're they're a team fight comp. They're not strong. They're not as strong in their lanes as they were last game. Janna is nowhere near, you know, what the what last game could provide from Organa and, and whatnot, so Yeah, the single target uh, CC is definitely lacking. But what we're going to see from Concord is a really strong dragon fight later on. Like, exactly. all the displacements can solo oh, out the Ash. Oh, well, gets the ulti, pins Parmesan to the wall, but not exactly the right way. Diab is really low and cannot get near, and Silent Reaper might pay the price. The ulti comes out and does not stop the uh, channel from Reaper. Oh, and here come the TPs. It does so. Tom Kench, plenty of mobility, been jumping around the map, and gets the flash. Run, run. Fat Man, run! And gets and gold Fat Man's helm. Batman goes down to the gold card. You have Jinx though in the mid lane pushing hard. Pushing minions. Yeah, you gotta get that CF. If you're, you're rocking a name like COG Double Riftu, you gotta farm, man. Yeah, I don't know whether or not I should pronounce it like Double Riftu or Double Lift. I don't know what he wants. I just call him Thomas. <laughs> Alright, well, Thomas, change your name. There's a name cell going on pretty soon. Change really? Yeah. You should get those sick. That sick name, Demi, my nickname, that a bronze actually took from me. So, uh, the bronze Kazix main who has my nickname, please return it to its uh, rightful owner. Please and thank you. You're doing it 
not just as playing Kha'Zix and going 0-10 every game. I'm so. sure he will get right to you via the stream. <laughs> He's totally watching the, the stream. Yep. Double lift, ganks, taking out a pink ward. Zod's like, no, that's mine. Um, Still relatively even in gold right now. We're, we've yet to see a first dragon, which is kind of interesting. I would have expected a dragon to be more about 15 minutes. Oh, actually, they George Washington did sneak a dragon. I didn't actually see that, which is interesting. Tiafkin of Destiny oh. over to double of going to get the trade Tiafkin and get gets exploded. exploded. Yeah, the Brom Shield did not come out fast enough, but that was a nice try from Archer. Yeah, the, the Jinx tracks came out at the perfect time, and just the, the cleanse on double lift, lift two, or Thomas. <laughs> just completely nullifies what they are trying to go for with the, the gold card gank. But uh, once again, you're gonna have Malza. We're gonna have a really strong split, split bush comp from Concordia, especially with uh, Malzahar as fast as he could shove waves. Oh, I don't know about this. Like the the pick comp will win against a, a split push that isn't some kind of hyper carry because, especially if they're far ahead, they're 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 quite strong right now. We also like, have the insane late game scaling from Jinx and Malzahar, technically. So it's not too bad, right now. And it's really gonna it's really gonna end up being the turn by potentially the next dragon fight. The they really really need to group. They need to fight as a group because look at this. They might get ah. A, he gets yeah, absolutely deleted. Here. Ooh, Parmesan does walk back. That damage is a lot. The bounce from the um, the snow haunting guys. The the burning space aids are really really hurting George Washington right now, especially with no MR. Did you, did you know George Washington had burning space aids? No. Um, Diab <laughs> with the flash doesn't get the Q though. TF actually Johnson failed his recall twice. Away. Archer there for support, emotional support. Yeah, definitely. Good trade from Engineer Diab. He's really playing this pocket pick Malzahar to a decent standard, I say. He's. It's not something we see often, so I don't really know what to say. I've never seen, like, I, I'm waiting for the day until Faker pulls out Malzahar at Worlds. Maybe just to style on Fnatic or something in the finals, hopefully, but... This is looking alright for Concordia right now. They need to make sure that they can prepare for the next dragon coming up. Yeah, and you're, you're seeing that uh, George Washington are dropping a lot of wards on the bottom side of their jungle, looking for... Concorded to potentially walk in and drop wards to get vision on that, and definitely with their composition, they could out trade and uh, just pick somebody off immediately. That's the danger, yeah. Concordia cannot afford to burn basically any cooldowns right now, any important cooldowns, because uh, as soon as Dragon comes up, they're gonna absolutely need yeah, those cooldowns. They're gonna need Lulu ulti, that's for sure. Well, the most important cooldown right now is actually Jinx Cleanse. Which is yeah. gonna be off cooldown soon, yeah. but they don't want to. Concordia does not want to fight until that cooldown is up. Just the Brom CC plus Ash plus the potential Tom Kench done. Yeah, if you notice, the gold actually has evened out here, so it's it's uh, looking all right for Concordia. They just need to play towards their composition. They haven't been doing that really, but it looks like they are now because they're grouping up in the mid lane. Yeah, they they really need to get. Maybe some potential ward clearing done on the bottom side, but again, they have to be so careful right now. It's just really dangerous to go invade that deep versus yeah. an Ash. You could get yeah. an Ash out, out of nowhere. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna get really aggressive. That could have been that could have been bad. If Vi had just ulted D up there, he was probably dead. Yeah, Vi needs to stand in the front more. There, there's no reason why uh, the Ash is further up than the Vi at that, at that point. Almost a steal on the red buff, but Vi smites it away. It's just actually not that okay. bad yeah. for them. Ash's slow definitely it, does not really need the red buff, but it would have been nice to have it on Ash. And the game has been paused. Don't know why it's been paused, but do we have a Gragas two buff? No. We don't. Hopefully, hopefully. So Gene Parmesan actually has disconnected, so we'll get that up in a second. So he's rejoining as we speak. So yeah, thankfully it wasn't that Gragas Q bug. 
<laughs> we we would have just been like running around without Q, only body body slamming stuff. Yeah. And for any of you who don't know, earlier today, Fnatic EDG game two was actually restarted because I believe Clear Love couldn't use his Q on Gragas. I think it was rain over. It was rain over. Yeah. Yeah, it wasn't. Yeah, I just received word that it was rain over. I was on the bus, so. To my, to my to my defense, I was on the bus and then getting hit in the face with snow pellets. So, it's a. Uh, it was not a good Best of Three series, but definitely don't go and watch that right now. No, <laughs> you're you're stuck here with us <laughs> in this pause. Be, stay here, stuck with us. You're, you're stuck with us. You can't leave. once you turn on the stream. There's no way out. There's no way in. Well, well there is a way in through the links, definitely, but there's no way out. You're stuck here. So you like you can't hit X. We've disabled the X button on your browser, and uh, you're stuck here to Malzahar. To the space. Yes, reconnected. Hopefully, um... <laughs> so we should see them unpause. You see it, but the players are getting so excited in the chat. Um... <laughs> <laughs> so excited to like re rejoin the game. Be so excited. <laughs> yeah, that's what they're getting excited about. There is a minute to dragon. Um... Scuttle is going to be pretty important in about 15 seconds. Which is also interesting because we could even rush down the Baron and three. Play is going to resume now. Immediately, and Archer Emia, Emilia is uh, going to. They're going to walk towards Dragon, scout this out. Oh, they're not defending their pink here. I don't know about that. Um, yeah. No, it's. Just... Not much they can do. Lulu was top lane, Jinx was mid, and Gragas had to be right there. So, definitely just leaving the pink ward die is better than dying themselves. So, that's a that's a whole lot of damage. Wow, I just ha Vi has just lost half her HP with they two don't spells. Know. I feel like Concordia should be looking for that fight in that area. They did have the pressure top lane. Lulu does have the teleport and. You know, they have an objective to fight over. They, you know, a fight there could have easily translated. They should really go and regain vision now that everyone on George, George Washington has bead. Yeah. They really need to clear out that ward in that bush. This is a severe misplay for George Washington, I yeah, think. Yeah, that B both... timing from Vi really hurt them. Oh, that was not a good time to recall at all. But Tom Kench is actually going to look to TP, and so is TF, getting vision on that dragon. It's... Q going to come out. It's going to go over to Concordia. Won't see anything further, yeah. will we? The Concord is going to look to shove mid right now with their newly acquired dragon buff. You basically cannot be further than that red buff area but, uh, 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 but, before 15 seconds of dragon spawn. Like, you really need to be at that point. But on that note, that was really good from Diab just to chunk out Vi super hard with his uh, Malzahar space aids. Just to get that little advantage in HP for, and forcing Vi to recall, so she instead of actually team fighting and getting obliterated immediately by a Jinx Rocket, so good on him for forcing that out of them. And uh, yeah, it's like they're going to go. Lulu's going to go back up top. Oh, and Ulti comes out. They're trying to get whatever they can right now, but they do get Reaper. Reaper is going to get stunned up. Gets <laughs> exploded. He just like dies in the frost. Yeah, did you see that icicle visual effect at the same time? That was pretty funny. Like, Frost yeah. Queen Jana just gets killed by ice. Yeah. Oh, Diab like... gonna get chunked, gonna get eaten. Ooh, that doesn't taste good. Inch Diab going. <laughs> Braum Almost tries to take the kill. Steal, yeah. The bloodthirsty supports. <laughs> the bloodthirsty supports always trying to steal your kills. Is not yet support of combat because we didn't. Well, Jana did. Brom did try to kill Jana, so maybe a bit of support of combat. Not as much. Jinx actually gonna dodge. She's gonna nice. lay down the traps. Onto Jinx. The flash comes out though. Can't she stay alive? Double lift is pretty low. Jana body blocking the Brom spells. Drag us all to the wrong way. Still, still putting on the damage onto Zod. Zod had eaten Brom. And definitely good for Concordia, just blowing the Vi out right now, so they should really look to potentially gank TF right now, because there'll be no way for George Washington to get on that Jinx with that cleanse being up right now. So I think Concordia can really start pressuring. Just 
get every lane to the to the to the river, or uh, pushed up to the river, group up and start taking whatever you can in their jungle. They they have a very very strong um, vision. Uh, yeah, George Washington has set up a good walking. vision ring around the mid lane. They have a ward right next to the bush, and Concordia could actually be looking to do Baron. They're gonna get spotted out by the Destiny. But that's the thing, they don't really mind if they know where they're going, as long as they stay together and take yeah, what they want, because they definitely. can force things. I think Concordia can definitely force team fights at point. If they're able to chunk out Vi, they could actually try and go for Baron right here. Malzahar plus Jinx will shred Baron extremely quickly. They are spotted out, they're going to move back a little bit. And... Court is still moving as a unit. Feels like they're playing StarCraft and just moving all their troops together. Ash getting the good E, scouting up the area. Jinx is going to get tagged by the Zap. Chunk, a little bit of chunks, but uh, still relatively even in gold where Concordia is about 2k gold behind right now. And 24 minutes into the game. Doesn't mean too much right now to be 2k gold behind with this late game scaling comp. It's definitely in a place they want to be. Um, uh, Double Riftu is farming pretty well, 40 CS ahead of his counterpart, but actually three kills down, which evens it out at that point. So again, we're gonna see the ward clearing joust for now, and probably gonna look to contest Baron soon. Baron, I think, will be the real point in this game where it breaks it open. If George Washington manages to get Baron, it could probably be the end of the game. So, the just the Baron buff on top of the the minions deny uh, lowering the ma hiring their magic resist against a double AP comp like this could be very brutal for Concordia. Let's see if George Washington can get the second dragon of the game. It's coming up in. One minute and thirty seconds. They do have scuttle at the moment and a couple of wards. Oh, the ulti coming out into the mid lane. Wander gets caught out. He barrels right underneath himself. Very nicely done. Oh, he sick flash from Gragas. A beautiful flash from Wanderer. He TF ulti comes out trying to grab him, but sees the allies nearby. The slippery fat man Ooh, escapes yeah. once again. That was actually super cool. That was some James Bond esque stuff that <laughs> right underneath himself. He burned so many cooldowns to kill him that it's actually so worth for Concordia. He burnt his flash yeah. and his ultimate, but George Washington burnt Ash Arrow, Vi Flash, Vi Alt. No, not Vi Alt. Not Vi Alt, actually Vi Q, well, whatever. Yeah. But they did TF get, Alt. Yeah, a bunch of a bunch of important stuff. Brawl multi as well. Yeah, and they burnt a bunch of ultimates just for the ultimate of Dragus. Most importantly. Yeah, Ingangs uh, has been left to farm, actually got a 30 CS lead for himself, which is definitely better for Lulu. Once she gets that uh, death cap, which he's building towards, it could be very good for him. I wonder which one of these teams is going to win a siege if they decide to do that. I actually think Concordia has the better siege with Jinx, but the thing is, George Washington has pretty good wave player with TF. Especially mm -hmm. once he gets his Looks like he's working towards Ludens, possibly. His wave clear is going to be pretty ridiculous. And now Dragon's going to spawn. Cordy actually has pretty good vision around this. But Vi and Lulu are pushing mid. Will they get caught out by Jinx? By the Tom Kench? Nope. Cordy's going to actually start the Dragon. Yeah, this is not a good setup from George Washington again. They need to be a little bit more on the ball and organized. Yeah, yeah, they were super late to come to the dragon, but they're going to look to contest. The Voidling actually blocks the Q. I mean, it's not incredibly important, but the point is not, you know, oh, we do have an arrow coming out. It's a bit late for an arrow. They could have done that. Rob doesn't have all. Why did he flash in? From Greg is oh, in, but she is super in deep. He deals any damage. Low Here comes Jinx. Out. Worth it. Resets. Um, she gets excited. She does get excited. Double, Double kill. I mean, out. Oh, is this going to be a triple? This is going to be a quadra kill. kill, possibly, coming up for Jinx. Penta, she's dead. Will this be the Penta? Penta kill! Beautiful job. Can't believe we have a Penta kill. Penta kill! We have a Penta kill in the second game of the, second game of the season. That's pretty, that is, 
That's pretty ridiculous. I'm going to see them go on to Baron immediately. They could shred this Baron with Jinx. I don't know if you guys saw that, but she flashed straight over some CC just to grab that reset and went wild. It was awesome. If Lulu's going to drop a bunch of shields. I don't know if they could do this. It's going to be super close. Actually, they can with the Lulu they shields. Can. I think they definitely can. Yeah. Lulu actually has her CDR cap just by buying Morello and CDR boots. So, Diab Kate should get away from this Baron. Yeah, he will die now. <laughs> and Diab goes down. And Ganks, actually, is he gonna go down too? Double Rift is gonna no. die. Actually, no. No. <laughs> everyone no. dies to Baron. <laughs> Lord Nasher. Oh, man. Lord Nasher giveth and Lord Nasher taketh okay. away. That was, uh. Should have waited 10 seconds for Gragas' and smite. <laughs> Maybe just like four or five seconds. Yeah, four or five seconds maybe. Uh, now George Washington is their turn to go on the Baron. They could actually do the Baron though, which is so different. So sad. So will we see the slippery fat man? Is TF going to die to Baron? Is everyone just going to die to Baron? Is this what's happening? I don't think so. That Baron, I, Jana I, gets a Baron, what? What? How did that happen? Blood water? <laughs> is that blood water? It's actually Silent Reaper. Uh, who's who's going to die for his sins against the blue team, but uh, <laughs> definitely good. <laughs> I see you ulting there, Vi. Let me do that for you. And uh, everyone dies to Baron, and then Concordia gets a Baron with Janna. This is uh, starting to get a bit out of control. I don't even know. how. What, what is going on? This feels like we're watching some s silver solo queue where just everyone I, just dies randomly in five minutes. First it felt like Concordia was doing this epic comeback. I, I had the, like, the, the Indiana Jones heroic music going on in my head, and then that Baron happened. And then the... I really thought if Janna or Gragas had gotten there sooner, possibly could have seen the Baron gone down, but Gragas had just, would just died too too late into the fight to actually get back to Baron in time. But that was definitely interesting. And does anyone on Concordia have Baron right now? I don't I think maybe Malzahar. No nobody has Baron, so just <laughs> just three hundred gold. Oh that's all the Baron did. He gave he gave Concordia three hundred gold. Poor old man Nasher. <laughs> they angered him twice, paid the price for angering him, and then it no have been worth it had he gotten the buff on at least one person because they do have a pretty strong seed as you pointed out before. Yeah, if Malzahar had gotten that buff, we would have seen like some pretty pretty nasty turret pushing right now, but Concord is really <laughs> mismanaging their sideways. George, George Washington, both their side lanes are pushing super hard, so they have to take care of those or else top lane is going to probably push in super hard into them. That pentakill definitely uh, helped his damage. He is really strong. For yeah, he, and a BF and a he just, he just picked up a damage. Five hundred fifteen crit. Yeah, he just picked up a bloodthirster off that jinx. Yeah. Gonna absolutely destroy the Tom Kench. Wow, through the gray hell. Slow will do that. And <sighs> Fetch is already at half HP. Looks like they can probably take this mid turret now. Yeah, this is the really, on being around. This is the really part of the game where Lulu Jinx comes online. Jinx is just so fast. And oh, look at their her, look at her damage. damage. Oh my yeah. word. Damn. Oh, look at the shields too. She has like three thousand health. She's tanker than out of mana, though. Gotta be careful. Yeah, they're gonna pre they're gonna pick up this turret uncontested. No, yeah, she doesn't need to. They should, be they, right now, they should rotate bot lane and get the bot lane turret too. Their their siege is just so strong. Like, Alzheimer is actually doing that. It is four v five in the middle lane, or technically four v four, but. But well, Lulu, Lulu counts for another like a six person technically. Tom it's Kench like, coming in. It's gonna be three v four in the mid lane. Fetch gonna get base. deleted. Look and how much health she has. She has like four k health. Oh. Yeah, this is. Definitely looking good for Concordia. They just need to keep up this pressure with the Jinx on the outskirts of the fight, keeping people at <laughs> Jinx gonna like kill that. Brom. Now Brom's onto TF. TF gets exhausted. exhausted. This looks like the end of the game. This actually could be the end of the game. Maybe not the end of the game, but we could see them pushing and, bot and, and getting waves coming, and there are, there are there's a lot of pressure on both sides. They're gonna definitely try. I don't think they could yeah. end it. Could looks they like end? it? Jinx is 10-2-0, and oh, an absolute beast performance from Jinx this game. Yeah. And it's going to be a 2-0 for Concordia, it looks like. Very yeah. well played for both teams, though. Not much George Washington could do about the Jinx going to try and pick up some more kills for good measure. Yeah. Uh, Tom Kench going to die. <laughs> That's what a weird interact. Just silences in her. No, don't eat the Jinx. Let the uh, Jinx live. Jinx we'll, still lives. We'll survive. And, uh, yeah, Concordia getting the 2-0 this week. 
better performance from the games last week where they dropped zero two to George Mason. Now they beat another George and they go up two zero. So they're one and one on the season. This was actually George Washington's first game of the season. So definitely some work to be done for them. Moving on. And uh GG's to both teams. So well, it looks like we thank you guys for watching today. We're gonna put our little intermission overlay so you guys could check out don't forget concordia is hosting a world's finals viewing party so you all should definitely get your tickets they're only ten dollars and uh also our shirts it's your last chance to order your shirts this weekend and then uh we'll be sh ordering them and shipping them out mid-november so people definitely drop drop by our office at 2150 bishop and uh, pick up your tickets so thank you guys for watching and uh we'll see you next week for some more league of legends action Hopefully I don't die in the snow. So, bye guys.